You're listening to Sonny's Monday Motivation here on LoudMouthRadio.com. What's up, guys? It's your host, Sonny, right here on Loud Mouth Radio Network, and I'm bringing you another Motivational Monday message. And I hope that everyone that is having an opportunity to take the time to listen to this actual podcast is having a stupendous day. I hope that you will be touched, inspired, motivated, some some charge or another from this content that I'm going to deliver to you today. And I'm going to get right in it. I am extremely excited about having a moment with you today. And I... I don't know what you're doing at this moment, but I want to make sure you understand exactly what I'm going to say to you. I'm going to tell you today for real what it is. I just need you to know how important it is for you to believe you're worthy. That is today's conversation. Believe you're worthy. You would be surprised how many people that is moving around you, whether it's family, friends, peers, coworkers, that is lacking the belief factor that they're worthy. I'm not going to say that there's been measurements of time that I haven't felt that way because I have forgot to understand and to remember that I was worthy. One of my very good friends and, and, and former classmates, NDRV, made a complete album called Worthy in 2019. Love that album. Love the song. Uh, If you've had an opportunity, if you're not familiar with the song, if you're not familiar with her as an artist, I do recommend that you listen to it and take a chance and and, and see what what I'm talking about. You know, go to YouTube if you don't have, uh, you know, a streaming service that allows you to stream the music. Go online and, and, and look it up. Trust me when I tell you it will be so worth it for you to hear it. Hear that word again, worth, worthy. And one of the things that I think is so important is being able to have things like India's song, for instance. Um, I remember just the other day when this message came to me that I wanted to talk about this, right? And it was... um, I can't remember what it was I was watching, but something um, just sparked the thought. And I remember going into my into my Apple Music and pulling up and listening to India song "Worthy." I'm, I'm going to share a little bit of the lyrics with you guys. That is 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 just the very first part of of her of her song. Um, I know exactly what you're thinking. If heaven starts a million times, I can see the question that's behind your eyes or you're searching for your peace of mind, now listen up to this truth. You are me and I am you. Every one of us is worthy. Isn't that amazing? And it's so true. I think sometimes, um, I think what provoked this thought was I was on social media, and there's some very heavy controversial things that's, that's happening around a few things that, around a few people that I do follow on a couple of my social media pages. And they have prospectively become, you know, considered heavily influenced uh, content creators or or social media influencers, right? And, you know, that has become a very high popularity of of context in, in our society, you know, influences that word. And believe it or not, there's a lot of people in our society right now that has been tremendously affected uh by the aspect of 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 just that following uh, influencers or people that they felt um that came across them as a certain position or a, a inference of them that gave them such a level of prestige that they looked upon them to be uh something of great magnitude right i remember probably about 8 or 9 years ago uh, Live Off Radio, we were covering uh, a film festival in Atlanta. And I can't remember the name of the host film festival, so forgive me. I, I want to say it was an African-American film festival that was that was running. 
And um, during that, that, that time period, Lisa Wu, who is oh, was a cast member of uh, the Atlanta Housewives in its earlier, earlier stages, if I'm not mistaken, uh, she's the ex-wife of the R&B singer Keith Sweat. And I had never, um, I had never met Lisa until this particular point. And, you know, a lot of times we watch shows or we see people in a context on TV uh, that sometimes people, you know, assume a personality type or, or, or a thought perspective about this person that they feel like this person is like this based upon what they're seeing on TV. And a lot of times those, you know, those types of shows are really, re- they're, they're, they're drawn to, 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 you know, give drama. They, they're, they're, they're charged to be over the top a lot of times and extra and overexerting and, I will tell you that sometimes when you meet those same people in person, don't be surprised if it's not the element of what you see, right? And so uh, I understand that. As a producer, writer, actor, you know, content, you know, I I understand it, right? Um, But that does not mean that you can't be pleasantly surprised or taken back when you do physically meet someone, right? And I had never really thought about, you know, oh, when I meet Lisa, this, this, and this. That really never crossed my mind. The opportunity came along, and, hey, here she is, right? So we get an opportunity to talk. We took pictures. We vibed about the film and things of that nature. And, you know, and I asked her about, you know, kind of, you know, how she was doing with projects and whatever she may have had going on at that time. And she said something so profound, and I would never forget it, and it just really gave me such a bright space with her. It it just really made me feel warm and fuzzy about the context of Lisa. And she was uh, making a statement to somebody I think had come, come, come across and was smitten by her, you know, presence and um, they made a lot of these statements that kind of kind of give you the element of a feeling of like being kind of starstruck, right? And so what was so cool about Lisa's response, I don't even remember what the person said, but Lisa made the statement of saying, you know, we all have jobs. You know, we all just got jobs. We're all just people doing what we do. And so she made it such a down-to-earth response and moment for that person in that space um, that we were all in to understand, really for me to see her understanding of that. And it, it, it left such a great uh, air with the person. Um, I took note of it, and, and it's something that always stood out that I, that's in the back of my mind. So when I think of her, I think about that. And, you know, just how warm she was, you know, she was smiling all the time. Uh, she greeted people. She didn't shy away from anybody, you know, just just, just that whole nature. And so it, it, I'm going to come, you know, come back to the notion of the other day when I was online. Um, and what happened, there was just, there was a level of, uh, you know, when you follow somebody and or you have common connection to people on social media and, you know, somebody says something about a person, it becomes almost like a trending topic even amongst your friends. You know, the algorithms and things of that nature have changed so much also on social media that it's intentional for you to be able to have kind of that breaking news or that, that repetitiveness, you know, to show up in your timelines or your feeds. So, you know, this, this, this whole um, entourage of activity was happening and it was surrounding a few people, which I'm not going to go into context who they are, what they are, what happened, or all of that. But it it, it made me kind of take a moment, and and I was looking at what was said and what was posted and what was going on in the conversation, which was not uh, the most positive thing either, um, unfortunately. But you know, this person that they were talking about had a high level of influence, has almost 500,000 followers on Facebook. Um, and and has a, a has a spouse that also has a large following, and they're working their business and stuff online. And so there's just some things that was being said and coming out, some accusations and all of those things. And it it leveled out uh, to be very complicated and complex because what was being stated uh, or accused of these individuals, there was actual video of conversations being had between this person and another person that kind of aligned with what was being said. So it made it hard to kind of deny 
that the, the, the activity or the statements in the response wasn't factual. Um, with that being said, it really gave this whole thought of um, how people will take the measurement of other people and measure themselves against it. And it's so easy now in this society at this time, at this age, to be able to look at things and look at yourself and do comparatives. And if you're not careful, it will allow you to be pulled into a hole or a, 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 a mental space of lack or, be, or lack of belief that you're worthy or just as, as, just as invaluable as the next person. So I, I, I want to kind of just really say that, you know, how it, it's so easy um, to, 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 to fall into these spaces. I know that I have. Even, even today, I have a multitude of things going on around me, right? And, and, and that activity causes me to have to sometimes um, have more retrospective of myself than I may care to. But because I am intentionally um, publicly speaking, I'm publicly speaking to you now, you know, whether I want to admit it or not, I am taking a step of being influential to somebody by saying the things that I'm saying, by discussing the things that I'm discussing, by making motion and notion of what I'm saying. And, and by no means am I just giving you know, direct advice, but I definitely am speaking from a perspective of my own experience and enlightenment, right? And because of that, there still is a level of influential aspects that I may have to somebody else, right? And there's never a time where it's okay for somebody to make somebody feel like they're less worthy just because, um you know, maybe your position or your or your financial circumstances or the way where you live, the cars that you drive, the clothes that you wear. It's amazing how a lot of times people are using those things as a value system to to to, to determine their worth. You know, that that word worth has been become more popular than than ever over the last thirty years. Forbes. I remember as a kid, uh, this show used to come on the rich and famous, right? And I can't remember that I, I can see the man's uh face in, in, in my in my in my mind's eye, but I can't think of his name. It'll come to me. But this old overzealous guy um that used to come on, he was the host of that show and you would see these over the top mansions and or different ways that people lived or different things that they were into, different businesses and stuff that they had. And so it's been a long time. This is a new society has started a long time ago when it came to the, the have and the have nots, the nobles and the peasants. You know, I've, I've said really and truly over the last 10 to 15 years that we've become a society of the have and have nots, that it's not just a racial uh, aspect of color or, um, or, 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 or gender specifically only, but there's also a level of classification of, you know, financial have and have not, um, you know, circumstances of division. So there's just so many levels of things that as a society can, can, can divide us or make us think that we're not worthy, right? And that is so easy to leave you feeling like you're in this, this level of a, of a trap that, um, that maybe how you show up in your physical space in, in, in segment and time is not measurable enough for the next person. So I just, I, I, I think that um, it's quite easy to get caught up in that space. And even as I'm telling you, it gives me a reminder myself of how easy it is to fall into those spaces and, and to also recognize that you have the ability to be more and, 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 and that you can be enough and believe that you're worth whatever it is that you desire for yourself, right? And and not to allow yourself to be put in a situation of consideration to be less than what you feel yourself yourself to be, okay? And I can tell you that this can happen in so many different variations of relationships. It can happen between marriages. It can happen between family dynamics. It can happen between coworkers. It can happen amongst friends. It can, it can, it can be... 
you know, measured in regards to, uh, you know, societal comparatives. Like I said, social media has now made it so much easier for us to see and, 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 and be uh, given belief factors about things, about people, about circumstances that may or may not be true. You know, um, I find myself more driven or more uh, motivated or more inspired at times when I see people, places, or things that people are experiencing, and they, and you know, and they, and things are happening to them. And I say, "Oh, this is great because if this is happening for them, it can happen for me. If it's over here happening in 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 my neighborhood, you know, God's in the space in which there's blessings being had and made constantly. So if you take a different retrospective aspect of how that looks for you." In, in the defined space of humanity, I promise you it will take so much pressure off you and give you so much more leverage in your approach toward the things that you desire for yourself. So listen, that's my tidbit. Sonny said it. I just wanted to let you know that I know and believe that you're worthy. I know that I'm worthy. And I think sometimes we just got to be accountable to remind each other just how impactful we really are. So, y'all, that's my time. I'm just going to tell you right now, if you hadn't had a chance, opportunity, check out some of our archives. We are on demand 24-7 at Live Mouth Radio Network. We're on your favorite podcast platforms from Apple TuneIn to uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeart, Stitcher Radio, Live Mouth Radio Network, 2Ds. Put us in. Make us your favorite. Follow us. Subscribe to our channels. I appreciate you guys so much. And as always, be a blessing. And be blessed.